everyone, I'm Allie Buckman with the Potomac Bead Company, and I'm going to be working with some awesome new mini duos today, making this Lily Pons bracelet. And the Lily Pons bracelet, when you're looking at it, is going to consist of some mini duos in a herringbone stitch, as well as we're going to add some regular super duos along the top and some 15 O's. If you need any of these materials, I'm going to list them out and then on the left hand side also there will be links to them um, for my website that you can order if you would like. Uh, there are using, like I said, the new mini duos. You can do the same pattern with the regular super duos, so keep that in mind too that if you want the regular super duos, that would work as well. It'll just be a tiny bit different as far as spacing. You'll switch from 15 O's to 11 O's if you want to do that. For my mini duo colors, um, I am using two different colors of mini duos to highlight kind of the middle here of my lily pond and then also the sides of it. Um, we are going to be using the stone green luster in the mini duos and that's going to be our base color. On the tops here popping out where I have my blue color there, that petrol color of the other mini duo, I'm going to be using the jet bronze color. And then I'm going to be using two colors of 15 O's. So when I did the example here, I used 11 O's and 15 O's. Did not like the way that that looked and the effect that I got. So I'm switching from 11 O's to just all 15 O's. I'm going to be using the Duracoat Galvanized Silver in 15 O's, as well as one of the Mayuki coatings in the 15 O. This is the, uh, the Crystal Sunset Matte that you're working with. I have a size 10 English beading, English style beading needle here. It's the Pony brand. Um, and then I have a pewter button that I'm going to be ending it off with. And this is the Flower Vortex pewter button. I also have handy some super new glue. I'm working with 0 .006 Wildfire Thread. I also have sitting near me the Wildfire Cord Cutter, which is just a thread burner. I have a plier sitting here so that, that way I can flatten out the end of my thread, and I'm working on a bead mat. So if you need any of those materials, you can definitely get them from us, or you can go to your local Potomac Bead Company. Underneath the description here of the video, there's a little show more button. That'll give you links to all of these product categories as well if you need any of them. To get started on this lovely lily pad bracelet, what you're going to want to do is dump out all of your beads all of your kind of collection here of the beads, whatever you're using on the outside, which for me is going to be that crystal sunset map, and then your two mini duos. I'm going to take the other 15 0 color and my super duo, which I forgot to say, sorry, is in the um, jade dark travertine color. I'm going to be using that down the middle of my bracelet. Those I'm going to push off to the side, and the other ones I'm going to make little piles of those. You want to start out with about five feet of thread. A lot of people ask how much thread to start out with. I do a lot of beginner's classes, and I teach a lot of people that aren't really um, fluent in bead weaving and haven't done a lot. So I don't like to give people more than about four or five feet of thread at one time. I would rather teach them the correct way to add thread to their project, whether or not that's weaving back or tying onto based on the project. I'd rather them not get all tangled and frustrated. So that's generally why I start out with about five feet, easily manageable, and I hate to have tons and tons of thread. So to answer a lot of your questions, about five feet is the starting point with a lot of my projects when you're working with thread. So I'm going to go ahead and lay out my materials, get my needle threaded, and get ready to start. When we're starting the bracelet here, I wanted to turn it upside down for you to look at it and to realize that it is a herringbone stitch. When you're working with it, you're going to actually be working with that herringbone stitch and adding an extra mini duo in the middle. That's what's going to stick up and that's what we're going to catch and add our little lily pads in the middle of this bracelet. We are going to start out with a stop beam and we'll come back and add our clasp and our loop for our clasp. Again, I have my five feet of beading thread and I'm gonna pick up a 15-0 that I have on the mat which is not a color that I'm using in the project. This bracelet is one that we're going to come down and back multiple times, so I'm not going to have to leave a huge tail at the end because I'll be able to put my clasp on with the threaded needle end. 
So I'm only going to leave about two inches. The nice thing with that is your tail does not get mixed up in your project and you don't have to come back and add a needle to that end. When you're doing the stop bead here, I have it showed two loops, one loop and then the other loop. That is the way to do a stop bead. Two loops away from the thread end, you're gonna see the thread two times on the side of your bead and that's gonna stop your beads from falling off the end. To get the standard two rows of your, uh, of your herringbone stitch, you are going to be doing just a two row standard but add a super duo in the middle, or a mini duo in the middle. When you're on the sides, we're gonna add our 15 O's to decorate the sides. So to start out, if you don't know herringbone, this is actually a pretty um, easy one to follow when you're looking at it, but if you do have problems with herringbone stitch, go back and just watch the herringbone video that I've done showing the stitch itself without adding anything in the middle. It might be a little bit more clear for you. I'm doing my base color as my green here, and then my bronze color is gonna be the one that's sticking up here along the top of that mini duo. So to start out, I'm gonna be using my green color, and then I'm gonna be using my bronze, and then my green. Just at the starting point, I'm gonna take two of my 15 O's and put them in the middle of my stitch. Moving on, I'm gonna take my green, cause that's my herringbone, my bronze in the middle, and my green. I'm gonna let that whole pattern, that pattern of three, go down the whole way to my stop bead. Once I have that next to my stop bead, I'm gonna continue with my herringbone stitch. When you look at the herringbone stitch, it's gonna alternate sides, actually, it almost zigzags which side that the seed beads are going to be on the side of. It's actually nice to have these 11 O's here, you can see it a little bit better. Again, I'm gonna be switching to 15 O's, and we are gonna use three 15 O's on the side of our project. I'm gonna sew back up the second hole of the last mini duo, and I'm sewing back towards the stop bead. That's gonna put the 15 O's on the sides of the mini duos. As I pull the thread, I wanna also pull and make sure that those mini duo or those 15 O's hang out on the side. When I have those in place, I'm going to add another set of my herringbone above. The middle mini duo is always just gonna basically hang out there. For this whole row, you're not reattaching to it. Every time you're between your green, you're adding another rotation of your three. Another pattern of three. So your three beads go on of your mini duos. And then you sew from the top hole of the first of your green to the top hole of the second green. And that's gonna create that V effect of the herringbone stitch. So you can see that creates that V. When I'm in the middle here, I'm just gonna sew right over to the next of my uh, mini duos and I'm going through the second hole. Pull nice and tight and that's gonna pull those two together right next to one another. Again, I'm between my herringbone rows here. So I'm gonna add my group of three and I'm gonna sew through the second hole of the first bead that was added onto our project, sewing towards the stop bead. Pulling the thread through. When I let go of that, you're gonna have your first little herringbone. The mini duos that are in the bronze color will kind of just hang out there. If possible, you wanna keep them all facing to one direction, kind of pushing them back, so that way it's not as hard to grab onto them in the future. Again, they're just hanging out there. You're never in this whole pass going back through them at all. When I'm on the side, coming out either the left side or the right side, I'm going to add my three 15 0 beads and then sew up to increase and add the next row through the second hole of the last mini duo that I added on to the previous row. Got a little bit of a jumble there. 
pulling the thread through, give a nice tight pull, and that's going to kind of lock that last one in place. As I'm going now to add my next row, I'm in the middle between my herringbone row here. So between the two greens, I add a green, bronze, green, and let those drop down. Skip over to the next green on the opposite side. Sew through that green as well as the next one to add your next pattern of three. This is one of those projects, um, herringbone, and especially with when I'm working with some of these bigger beads, I always hold the project. Sometimes I don't want them on film just because it's harder for me to actually show you guys when it's in my hand. Once I'm coming out that first row there, or that first bead in my next row of herringbone, I'm going to add my pattern of three. And keep in mind, you can make this bracelet a lot wider if you would like. Once I have my pattern of three, I'm going out towards the outside, going through the super duo on the other, or the mini duo on the other side. When I'm on the side here, I'm going to add my three 15 ohms. So through the top, the second hole of the last bead added. And I'm just gonna continue that as I go. As you add your rows, you're gonna notice what I was saying about keeping that middle mini duo kind of facing up. So that way when you look at it on the side, they're just kind of hanging out there. That way when you go back and add our detail on the top of the lily pads, you don't want to have to kind of dig around in your project, which sometimes will expose some of the thread. We're gonna continue this two rows of herringbone with the extra mini duo on the inside here. The whole way, the length of our wrist pretty much. We're going to be adding the button on the first end and then we'll come back and we'll add a loop on this end. Any type of clasp you wanna add, we'll do that and I'll kind of explain how you would go in if you wanna use a slide clasp or anything like that. Um, but as you're working, you want the bracelet almost to fit. You wanna leave yourself about a half an inch in the back of your wrist when you're looking at it in order to add the button. So go ahead and make this about six and a half inches, um, seven inches if you have a little bit bigger wrist, and then we'll get ready to add basically our next element. So just to show you the effect that you're getting is you will get that nice almost um, leaf pattern there down the middle with your herringbone, and then you have all these little mini duos sticking up on the sides. If one happens to drop to the back, you can see one right there drop to the back, not a big deal. But like I said, as much as possible so you don't see a lot of extra thread, keep those there. Herringbone stitch is gonna be a little bit springy. Um, when we add the beads, we will kind of make up for that springiness so it's going to kind of shrink it to fit. So think about that when you're doing it. And you're just continuing on adding your pattern, building on and getting to your length, it becomes quite um, a quick but actually repetitive, kind of relaxing because it's not a pattern that you have to really do a ton of counting. Um, you're doing more pattern than counting and it moves very quickly. So keep building on, making it again about a half an inch less than your wrist size. So I'm done the length of my bracelet and I had exactly enough. I actually had four left over of my mini duo beads. So if you do have a larger wrist, um, you can, uh, you'll probably need one more container of this. Another idea, use a different color down the middle and then you have enough to kind of change up all the other colors that you're working with because the color that pops up, you only use about a half a tube. If you use a third color, be the same way, that way you can kind of switch up and get three bracelets. For my last section here, right before my clasp, I have my section of three. This first time what I'm gonna do, or the last time, I'm sorry, what I'm gonna do is actually just do my regular herringbone switch or stitch. I'm switching to the bronze color because I think that'll look nicer next to my clasp. And I have just the regular, like I said, herringbone stitch going on. Going across, adding the last two beads and stitching across. That's gonna pull your project in a little bit more and kind of help to get that finished end. It almost looks like a bunny kind of sitting up there with the beads. I have three of my 15 O's then that I'm putting on the sides here. 
And once those three 15 O's are on, I'm sewing towards the middle. I'm now gonna get ready to add my clasp and closure. And I'll get ready to do that and set up with my next color of beads. So I'm gonna dump out here my silver, because that's what I'm gonna use for my loop and my clasp attaching. And I have my silver 15 O's as well. When I'm coming back through the middle here, I'm not going to add any super duo or mini duos. All I'm going to do is I'm going to add my 15 O's. Actually, I'm going to stick with my sunset color. So on my needle, when I'm coming out my herringbone, goes three 15 O's that I'm going to put on right here in between. It's going to be, leave me a little space in the middle. I'm going to do two 15s and then sew over. Once I'm out between the herringbone, three 15s go on and straight over. Now what I want to do is get back to the middle of that herringbone stitch to those two beads that are in the middle here at the end and I'm going to use that to attach my clasp to it. So my clasp is going to sit right there off of that. To get back to it, I'm going to add two 15 O's going from the top hole of my last mini duo down to the bottom hole, sewing towards the middle and going through both beads. That's going to hide any thread that I would have showing right there on the end and just kind of pull that together. I'm also going to tighten up my last row. When I'm here then, what I want to do is I'm going to go straight over through the second row of herringbone back, come through that first mini duo of the bronze color. And the name of this is basically we're just hiding our thread so that way we don't see a lot of extra thread in order to add our clasp on. I'm then going to sew from the top hole of that mini duo or the bottom hole to the top hole and through the first two beads in the middle there. So I'm coming up right after the two beads before a mini duo. Once I'm there, I'm going to add five of my 15 O beads, flip over to my button, sew on the button shank. And the reason I say five these here will actually go through, but if you're putting on a cut button or if you're putting on a clasp closure, about five 15 O's is what you want on. On the other side, I'm going to put another five 15 O's, and that's going to hold and create my loop for my button. When I have that on, I'm going to sew back through the 15 O's that my thread is coming out of, those middle two, in a circle. What that's going to do is actually create that circle to hold on my clasp. And there you can see the little loop there. Again, if you had a cut button, five beads on through the end of the cut button and back down. I just thought this project would look nice with some silver. I'm going to go back through and reinforce by going back through all 10 of those C beads. And once I get that all done, I'm going to bring my needle and thread out those two 15 O's that I'm coming through. And we're going to step up and get ready to add to the top. So I'm coming out of my two 15 O's after reinforcing my little loop clasp here. And what I want to do is get back here to my first of my mini duos that is sticking up. When you look here on the example piece in the side, basically what we're going to be doing is going from that last mini duo that's on there and we're going to be catching on to that top to create kind of an angling effect. To get there, I want to sew through the mini duo on next to my clasp, sew through those three C beads, sew and come out the bronze mini duo on the corner. So you'll be coming out right on the edge there. Once you're right there out on the corner, here's where we're going to switch to our silver beads. You are done with your mini duos, um, except for couple here that we're going to use at the end. So you want to keep about four of your secondary color at the end. 
And what I'm gonna do is catch on here to that first mini duo. To do that, I'm going to add five 15 O seed beads. And this is my galvanized silver, that Duracoat color. And I'm sewing up the seed bead, or up the mini duo, towards the center of my project. And that's gonna create that little bridge there from the outer edge to the first mini duo that's sticking up. The whole time now what we're gonna do is go through that first ridge here, going through all the second holes of the super duos that are sticking up in that bronze color. We're gonna be working with one side and then we're working with the other side. All we're gonna be doing is going back and forth in a zigzag pattern, adding our 15 O's in. Here I use two on the sides. We're actually gonna be using three to create a little bit more curvature and three on the inside. So it's a very simple pattern. Three 15 O's go on, and then you go from the inside towards the outside of the next mini duo in line. Three more 15 O's go on. And then you're going from one mini duo to the next from inside to outside. And you can see then it's just kind of creating that snaking effect. That's what's gonna set up our area in order to add our little lily pads. And I'm just gonna continue the whole way down the line on one side here, going through and adding three on one, three on the other. So you can see the idea is that we're catching on to those mini duos that are sticking up, adding three on the inside, three on the outside, and creating that snaking silver effect. Continue that down the whole way on this left-hand side. We'll add a loop and then we'll come up the right. So I've gone down the whole side here, adding on the collection of three on each side of my mini duo that's sticking up. And I'm here at the end. What I've done is I've moved my uh, stop bead there right off to the end. I'm going to have an opportunity here to tie on there. What I'm going to do is actually forego some of my extra beads that I was going to add on the end and I'm going to attach my loop clasp here. I'm going to get to the outer edge here by adding five of my seed beads like I did on the first side to get that little zigzagging motion and I'm going to do that here on the end too. So I'm coming out my last bead towards the end and what I'm going to do is tie on or tie the knot so that we are ending the starting thread. So back to the starting thread here, we're just going to tie those two ends together. Once I have that tied, I'm not going to worry about cutting off that starting thread or anything till after my project. It's going to create a little bit of a little bulge there. You want that to occur. I'm tying three knots, making sure that I'm not tying into my beads. I'm just tying right below them. You can see I'm switching which thread I bring through the loop. That's creating a square knot. Again, just keep it on there and kind of move it off to the side. We're going to create a loop for our button now, and we're also going to then get over to the other side so that way we can mimic the sets of three that we did. To create our button, just like the other project, or the other side, we want to get to the middle two beads right here. I'm going to sew through that green mini duo that my thread is coming out of. When I sew through that, it's gonna give me an opportunity on the back here to add a couple beads. The reason I wanna do that is to keep my beads from sticking up, or you can just go through the mini duo. That's up to you. If you're gonna add some beads so it mirrors the other side, you wanna add two of your 15 O's, or like I said, you can sew through the mini duo, up to you. I'll add the beads since I'm already, already here. And once I'm coming out in the middle here, I'm gonna get ready to create my loop. My loop is gonna be created with my 15 O's and I'm gonna stick with that uh, matte sunset color to add for the 15 O's. 
I'm going to string on a lot of 15 O's just to make a loop. And the number of 15 O's is going to depend on the size of the button you're using. If you are using a button clasp, about 28 if it's a cup button. A little bit more than that. You always want to make sure that the loop is going to fit around your button if you're using one. If you don't want to use a button closure or you want to use a um, regular metal clasp, you can also use wire guardians or wire protectors, sometimes called one, sometimes called the other. And you can use those at the end so that way your thread is not rubbing against that metal. Once you have your loop created, you want to make sure that it does go through the clasp so that you're not going to have any tension and really pulling effect. But again, you don't want it so big that it's going to slide out. I'm going to reinforce this loop right away, sewing back just like the other side in a circle, and then sewing back through all the beads that I just added. Once I sew back through all these beads and, sew and reinforce this loop, I want my needle and thread to come out on the corner of my stone green mini duo on the side. That's going to give me a chance to get my little five beads in place and get to the outer edge of my first mini duo that's sticking up in that bronze color on the outer edge. When I'm underneath here, because I did it on the other side, I'm going to add two of my 15 O's and skip over to that corner. Again, once you're in the corner, you're adding five of your silver 15 O's. And then we're going to pick up our mini duo. After that, it goes right back to the pattern of three to the inside, three to the outside. And then you're going to continue back towards your button end with that pattern. So there I'm on the corner, have those beads on, and I'm just going to continue down the left side now. So I'm at the end corner here, back to the button, and I'm going to put on my five C beads, and I'm going to stitch through the project right along that kind of last herringbone line. And what I need to do is I need to get to the top there to come out to the same corner that we started with when we started this zigzag. So I'm just going straight across here, creating that bridge so that way we don't see any thread. I really dislike seeing thread in my projects and unfortunately herringbone is one of those stitches that is really hard to not show thread. Um, a lot of times it does show thread. So if you can not show it, that's even better. When I'm coming out the edge here, in order to get up to the top, all I'm going to do is go through those couple outer seed beads that are there. And then back through these five beads towards the middle of my project. The outer edge is going to remain the outer edge. So when you're looking at it, we're not actually doing anything with those outer edge. What we're doing is decorating the middle of the bracelet. To do that, I want to get back to the middle by coming out here at the end. I'm going to sew through the three seed beads are, that are on the sides towards that are in the middle. That's what we're going to be sewing down the line the whole length of the project. I'll get caught there around my clasp. I'm going to pull that thread a little bit. Get it over your button. Pull. Really wants to go behind there. Okay. So now that I'm at this center track here, basically working along the sides, that's when I'm going to go in and actually add my super duo. If you want to, you can add a mini duo. That's no problem. And the mini duo will fit in there as well. The mini duo is what I added here. The super duo is what I'm going to add in the middle of my project. 
And looking at it here, this color match is really, really close. I thought maybe it would be a little bit more contrasting. Um, so I may, hmm, I'll stick with it. Um, but sometimes you get to the middle of your project with the colors and you decide to change your ideas and that. When you're in the middle here, we're going to be coming down the one side and then we're going to be coming down the other side. To do that, I'm going to pick up one of my 15 O's in my matte brown color in that sunset matte, one of my super duos and one of my 15 O's. We're going to sew through our three 15's in the silver color and then continue on. One 15 in the matte, one super duo, one 15, next three beads. So very simple but repetitive adding and creating that little bridge there. That's what is going to add then to the other side as well to create that line down the middle. Continue on adding in your 15 in the sunset, your super duo, and your 15. If you use mini duos in the middle, which like I said, you can here, it pulls the project in a little bit more and creates almost a little channel in the middle. So that's something to think about but it's a very simple pattern of adding those beads right down the middle line. I've gone down this whole side adding my super duos in and my 15 O's. And once I'm over here at the end, I'm going to come down and kind of pick up and reinforce my clasp one more time. To close up this channel a little bit, I'm gonna add two of my 15 O's and then jump down to the base here where the loop is and go back through the loop and reinforce it. Push that stop bead out of the way. If you want to, you could also do a peyote stitch here on the loop to make it a little fancier looking. And once I've reinforced then this whole loop, I'm going to come out those two C beads here and get ready to go down the other side of my project. So I'm coming out the end here of those two 15 O's on the base line and I'm going to add two more 15 O's and go up to the three Duracoat 15's in my silver color and sew through those. When you're coming out of the 15s on this second row, instead of adding a super duo, all we're going to be doing is adding the 15 O's and catching on to the second hole of the super duo that's already there. So we're going to be adding a 15 O, and this is in my sunset, sewing through the super duo that's already there. That's going to pull the project in together a tiny little bit. And that you can see the exaggeration with the mini duos versus the super duos. On goes another 15 and I sew through the next three silver 15s. And simple as can be, add a 15, sew through super duo, Add a 15, sew through the three 11 O's, or 15, sorry. And just continue right up through your project, seaming it up and adding those two sides together to get that um, kind of completed look right down the line. So here it is as I'm going right along and connecting to those super duos. Um, as I'm doing this here and getting this last row done, you can see the difference between the mini duos that are creating that arching effect and the line effect that you're getting from the super duos. The other thing that I thought of only now was that round duos will look really pretty in the middle as well. With the round duos, you wouldn't add any of the 15s on either side. You just go straight from the three beads to the round duos. So I challenge some of you to use some round duos in the middle here. The other thing that would look nice is if you put a uh, teardrop in the middle on the outside row instead of your 15 O's. So there's always a lot of variance that can be done with 
these designs, especially with the two hold beads. You really have tons and tons of options that you can pick up and work with. So I'm continuing on building as we go and sewing right down the line and that will finish up our bracelet then. So I'm on the last little pass here where I'm going to add my 15, go through the 15 silvers. And I didn't notice until right when I got here that I only have two on this side. So I'm gonna pick up one more, correct that error. Good thing bead weaving, you're easily able to correct errors a lot. Or I could keep it and no one would probably notice but me, but I'm adding that extra 15 in there. And what I'm going to do is basically reinforce my loop that my clasp fits on. And to do that, I'm just gonna go right back through all these seed beads, get to the middle of my project where the thread is coming out to create that loop. And then I'm gonna reinforce it. Once I have that, I'm just gonna tie off my project, go into the areas where I had that starter thread and that knot that I did and glue there, glue in an area where I added thread. And I did forget to show you guys where I added thread. I added it towards the inside of my project rather than on the outer edge when I was adding my 15 silvers in. That way you don't see the knot. And once I have it reinforced and all glued and knotted, it will be done. I really like how herringbone feels on the wrist. The Super Duos, I've always had a wonderful love for because they work up really quickly and they are such a fun shape. And I do wish that I would have used um, some round duos in the middle just because there are bead and I like to use those a lot. And I think that shape difference would have looked nice in the middle. But it's a really fun and quite easy bracelet. It's just adding a, a lot of the same exact things over and over again. When you're looking at the bracelet from the front, um, you do have that kind of lily pad effect. And then on the back, you have that nice herringbone effect. The back just puffs out just a tiny little bit more from the front. And when you put it on, it lays really nicely on the wrist. And with the button, it's quite easy to add the closure and add on. I just have tons of threads hanging out here that I need to get on. And the bracelet is going to lay wonderfully. Again, it's using the mini duos and the super duos. And you could switch out the top for something else. You could even put a Monty in the top. You can do the mini duos in a different color in the top to pull it on. So really, once you create that herringbone row and you have the opening in the middle, change it up, have fun, and you can use all different things because this base is really quick to create. If you do need any of the materials for this bracelet, again, the link is at the beginning or underneath the details of the video. You can print out a list there to take to a Potomac Bead Company store. If not, you can always purchase from me online at potomacbeads.com and have fun using all these uh, fun new two-hold beads like the mini duos and sticking some fun things on the top of those herringbone rows. Thanks a lot for watching everyone and as always, have fun and happy beading.